drink, the more great stuff you're going to get. Sure beats the bus. <laughs> So what I want to do is, is pursue and think about this from the standpoint of counseling. Um, think about it as, as a, a problem, really, um, as though you were in PepsiCo, the PepsiCo General Counsel's office, and you were asked, let's say you're a you know, junior associate in the, in the General Counsel's office, you're asked to review this advertisement before it airs, and to try to think about what advice you would give to PepsiCo about the ad. Okay? And you, you're free to rely on and recognize the fact that um, you know, what, the, what the ruling was, what the reasoning was, you're certainly free to use that, but think about it perhaps from the broader perspective of not just is this, you know, what's going to be the outcome of this litigation, but what should this business do? So then it's like way more clear to joke, but you don't have to say like, just we're kidding. kidding. <laughs> <laughs> And imagine that I'm a Pepsi uh, executive that you're, you know, the advertising executive that you have to tell this advice to. So basically, uh, you know, we took the impression, you know, if you're the marketing department, you need to cover all your bases in the event, you know, preventing you from a lawsuit. And so okay. we thought that, you know, it doesn't take away from the ad if you add the just kidding disclaimer at the beginning, um, which they did in the second ad, and also says, you know, you put a little asterisk and say, refers only to items in the catalog. Just by a show of hands, what other groups used a disclaimer strategy as a solution to this problem? Okay, so pretty much everybody and you were certainly thinking about it. All right, but certainly uh, it's clear that you would think about this, right? That's, that's the obvious thing. That's what lawyers do. They put language in things to you know, deal with legal risk. So the problem might be uh, that you didn't go big enough. Instead of having a Harrier jet, throw up a picture of the Death Star. And then <laughs> That's a big scale, like you know, reshoot the commercial um, type creative solution. So I might, my reaction, I'll just throw out there, cost, right? This is, it's, my time is not free, so every time I change the ad, I gotta pay some people to redo it. And back then, this is before CGI really took off, it was much more expensive, so that might be actually a significant cost to reshoot the ad like that. Anybody, any other group have another suggestion that might be, uh, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Um, it wouldn't change the ad too much to take off the points for the Harrier jet. It would still be funny. He was still cool. He came in with all the products from Pepsi, like from Pepsi. But at the end of the day, you wouldn't mistake that there was any way that you could get there. Okay, so we could, in a way, tone down the ad. But if you're worried about it, you just throw a couple more zeros on the number. Interesting. And what happens then? Then it becomes much more difficult, just as a practical matter, for anybody to try and pull, you know, Leonard's little game. Just make the price prohibitive, right? If the price is, I think actually the last version of the ad has 700 million Pepsi points, right? So 700, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000. Um, that translates at 10 cents a point to $70 million. Well, actually, Pepsi would come out quite far ahead were they to um, sell a demilitarized Terrier jet for $70 million. Right? So that's actually a solution that just adds a couple of zeros. It has no impact really on the structure or nature of the ad. And it might very well make the advertising executive quite happy. Right? So this is another potentially creative solution. Smaller scale, more modest, but in a way less interventionist. And this is a, another sort of little lesson I think from this, which is that a lot of times the best solution might very well be just adding a couple of zeros or removing some one item or something like that.